York event. It's a yearly event. This is our um, celebration of our 27th birthday. So happy birthday to us. And we're here with Jason Danielson from NetApp. And he's going to talk a little bit about some of the NetApp products and how they make your lives easier. You bet. And first, let me just say, happy birthday. I'd love to be 27 myself. Yeah, so it must nice. feel great. Yeah. Good age. Uh, our products and how they make life easier. Well, I think the first thing I always want to say when I talk to anybody about NetApp storage is that we, we have storage for post-production. We didn't for many years, and so people know us for other things that we do. But in the last year and a half, we've been selling really the fastest storage on the planet. And we uh, installed quite a few systems down in Los Angeles, and it's been running marvelously. So it's been a great first year for us with what we call the E-Series. Okay. Now, user feedback is, of course, important. What have you been hearing the most from the people that you've been talking to? Well, we're in the middle of writing up a success story with a company called Evergreen Films. They use us both for online and offline, and their terminology of online and offline, as you know, is different for different people. They work in 4K stereoscopic, so that's what online is to them. Offline is 2K and HD TV resolution for, for doing the offline work. And I guess the one thing they've said to us is, first off, they're blown away at the speed in the modularity of the system, but the thing that's really working for them is that they can bring their executive producer in now and screen 4K stereoscopic without worrying about hiccups without worrying about drop frames, without worrying about, gee, does content have to be moved or, or, or reformatted on the disk in order for this to fly while we've got the executive producer in here looking at this uh, cut of the film. So they're just breathing easier, which, you know, when a customer says, my life is easier because I've got this, that's kind of the most satisfying piece. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's amazing that you said they're uh, working in offline at 2K. Is that what the industry is coming to these days where offline is, is 2K? And well, I think it will, and then they'll start talking about offline is at 24 frames a second, right? Because people are starting to shoot things at 60 frames a second. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, one person's offline is another person's online. We're doing a lot of systems in post-production for television where nobody's working it. 2K or uncompressed HD, right? Everybody's working at 100 megabit or 220 megabit material, and that's their online. So I'm always, when people say, oh, well, we're working in high res, I'm always got to ask them, well, what do you mean? Yeah. What is high, high res, res to you? To you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Are most of your clients multiple seats, lots of seats, or is it in a, a facility like that, just limited amount of seats? Well, our whole reason to be is multiple seats, yeah. really. I mean, if you've got just one seat that you're trying to power with a, a storage infrastructure, you probably don't come to NetApp mm -hmm. to begin with. But one of the things I like to point out is we've lived in this world for the last 20 years where storage was only fast enough to support one seat at, at these higher resolutions, whatever that was, right? First it was one seat of SD, then it was one seat of HD, then it was one seat of 2K, right? So you still see a lot of silos out there and a lot of infrastructures just for one seat. And in fact, uh, at Evergreen Film with the 4K, that screening room is really a dedicated piece of our storage just for that room. So it's still one seat, mm -hmm. but behind that is some of our other storage that's supporting about 10 or a dozen 2K and HD uncompressed rooms. And we're doing, at, in the broadcast level, it's more like dozens. Uh, we've just put in a couple of installations that are more like 90 seats. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot of people editing the news in that kind of an Massive environment. Massive installations yeah. there, 90 uh, so seats. So the benefit is, is not that we're doing, ex except that there's 4K level where we're doing something new and different. Otherwise, it's doing a lot of the same, but it's allowing people to have multiple rooms attached to one piece of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So the, the winner is the guy that's taking care of the storage because he's got less different pools of storage to have to take care of. It's all online storage too, not near line, not offline as far as archive and stuff. This is all active storage that-, that Yes, yes. We're, well, we're doing a combination uh, of, of that in, in different environments. But in the case of Evergreen Films, we would call all of that online storage. We uh, like to use a term in the enterprise world, tier one storage. So tier one is that online active production storage, if you will. Mm -hmm. And tier two is kind of a gray area that's typically behind production where content gets moved to and maybe some processes are ac ac accessing that storage, but not the real time bandwidth hogs. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's still getting touched. Then tier three is, is more like deep archive. Uh -huh. 
Okay. And we're selling this storage everywhere because besides speed, it also is very dense. You get a lot of capacity in a small space. So for ABC Television in LA, we tripled the size of their archive in terms of terabytes. They went to, I think, 2.9 petabytes of storage. We tripled that from something like 700 terabytes. Mm -hmm. And we did it with less space, less power, and less cooling. So as one, one article I just read recently, people are kind of the number of disks that a facility has in post tends to stay the same. It's just the disks get bigger mm -hmm. and the disks get faster. Mm -hmm. so. But you mentioned energy savings and stuff like that too is things that you have to take into consideration. Well, and too, that's huge. In 15, you know, 27 years ago, it wasn't about any of that. It was just about can you actually get video off of a disk drive? Right. Now it's, it's, it's all those efficiency issues of, okay, I can get video off a disk drive, but I've got this room that's cooking up to 110 degrees and I can't buy enough air conditioning to keep it cool and how do I solve the next level of the problem? Mm -hmm. And in places like London, it's space, right? We don't have any more space. We got this little hole in the wall in Soho and here's our equipment room and it's packed full and I got to triple my capacity. How am I going to do that? Right. You're not allocating any more space to it. Just work with the space that they've got and make yeah. it that much more yeah. dense. They'll come to us and they'll say, we've got eight rack units. What can you sell us for eight rack units? And what will it do? Los Angeles, different than that as far as space yeah. allocation. And New York is tight sometimes. Yeah, New York is tight, not like London, but it's tight. And yeah, LA is not, not as bad. But you know, with LA, you've got somebody up the food chain that's crunching the numbers and he's looking at all of those aspects of it. We're working with Deluxe, for instance, and we're looking at doing more of a kind of a total economic impact report for them so that they've got something that says, gee, over the lifetime of this storage, over the next few years, we, it costs us this much. Uh, we save this much in production efficiency. We save this much in storage efficiency. And in the end, we're either happy or not happy with that investment. Well, Jason, is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, I think that's, that's great. That's it? All right, well, thank you for, thank you for joining us, and thank you for sponsoring our party. We oh, you bet. It. I'm hoping to get something out of it. Yeah, go, go have some All drinks. Right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Absolutely.